RJ Gross, Upland Game Biologist, North Dakota Game and Fish Department. So our pheasant crowing counts, uh, that's our main index. And again, it's an index, not a total population count of breeding roosters that are, that are coming into the, to the season. Uh, and it's a good, good way to look at overwinter survival. Um, you know, I didn't think I would say it again, but we basically have had two really easy winters, especially as North Dakota standards. Um, you know, not much snow at all. Um, really nice temperatures. Uh, this year we did have, you know, about a week, week and a half of sub sub-zero temperatures but pheasants came through again, and statewide the average uh, was up 6%. Uh, there's a lot of pheasants in pockets. And a lot of that is because overwinter survival. I mean, on a normal winter, we lose 75% of our pheasants from year to year. Uh, the last couple years, that's absolutely not the case. Um, they come through, there's food available, um, they don't have to trek through the snow, things like that. So two years of really high overwinter survival, coupled with two years of good production, uh, we, we do have a lot of pheasants. So we have four pheasant management districts uh, that, that we use in the state. District one is the northwest that goes all the way down to Lake Skakawea. District two is kind of the non-traditional pheasant habitat, kind of the Turtle Mountains and then over to the east. The southeast, you know, it's basically 94, uh, Interstate 94 and down. Um, and then to the Missouri River to the west. And then District 3 is basically, that's kind of the, the hot spot for pheasants. That's the southwest, um, basically from Bismarck, Missouri River, east, and you know, up into the Kildare Mountains. So the highest uh, crows per stop this year was the southwest, you know, just over 31 crows per stop. And that's the highest that's been since 2016. Uh, so really good news you know, down there. We have lost a lot of CRP down in that area. And that's where we'll continue to use, lose most of it. But, you know, CRP isn't the end all for pheasants. Um, you know, like, like species like white-tailed deer, things like that, they use it a lot more than pheasants do. Uh, they can adapt, you know, they, they, they still use what we like to call CRP-like um, habitat. So, you know, like small grains, you know, winter wheat, uh, alfalfa fields, you know, just any pasture land, a pheasant will use that. And that's why they can rebound a lot faster. And then the second highest this year was the Northwest. Um, and it was down a fraction of a percent compared to last year, which is okay because last year was, was really good. And they did have a few storms up in that Northwest part of the state this year that were, you know, you're gonna lose some pheasants and things like that. Um, but again, you know, they're over 21, 22 uh, crows per stop, still really good. Um, there was a good increase in the Southeast this year uh, which is kind of, it's, it's kind of misleading, you know, the southeast, when you're looking at our map, you know, it goes from basically the uh, North Dakota, Minnesota border all the way over to the Missouri River. The crows per stop were much higher, closer to the west, um, you know, like Burley and Emmons County, compared to kind of the traditional back in the day, the Oaks area, Sargent, uh, Dickey, Lamar counties down there. Still, you know, a lot of row crop conversion. There's not much small grains left down there. Um, the CRP is basically gone. So there's just not much of those grassland type acres for pheasants who are a grassland bird. And then the Northeast uh, District 2, which you know, again, isn't typical pheasant habitat, um, but, but there were, the pheasants are spreading out in there. I mean, there's still, there was even some, you know, Devil's Lake, there were some pheasants that were hurt up there, which usually those guys will feel kind of bad. They, they don't have the crows per stop that, that other people have, um, but they are spreading out. And, you know, the increases in, in that, you know, small numbers. So, you know, they went from five to 6.5, um, you know, so big, big increases there, but uh, good to see pheasants are spreading out. I was worried at first, we were pretty dry, obviously with no snow coming out of the winter. Um, and, you know, even through grouse surveys in April, it was getting pretty dry out there, but then we got some timely May rains. Um, they were kind of heavy in some parts of the state, you know, we had seven inches of rain. So I worry that some nests were probably washed away. It should have been early enough that if the nest was destroyed, they will re-nest. Um, but, you know, even, you know, looking behind me, the habitat is looking great. The, uh, there's plenty of bugs with that moisture. Uh, the habitat's looking good. They should be in really good body condition, you know, coming out of two really easy winters. Uh, so I'm hopeful, you know, but, you know, there's, there's always, it, the life of a pheasant is really tough. There's always something coming at them. I mean, you know, even a couple days ago, we already had a hailstorm up in the Northwest. 
that's really bad timing because peak hatch is right now. You know, June 10th through the 17th, you know, consistently is our peak hatch where most of our pheasants are, are hatched. Um, if we have hailstorms during that, you know, a hen pheasant can only protect them so much. You know, there's probably going to be some loss. If a nest is destroyed, if, if the eggs are destroyed before any hatch, the hen will re-nest. Um, but if some of them have hatched she, and we have hailstorm and those chicks, chicks succumb to hail, uh, they won't re-nest. I mean, things are looking great for nesting. The end all is check back, you know, after our late summer roadside counts, early September, um, the results from those, that is a better forecast of what the fall is gonna, is gonna look like.